In this lesson, we're gonna be learning about the Pythagorean theorem. The success criteria is I can explain the Pythagorean theorem, I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find an unknown side length in right triangles, and I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find distances between points in a coordinate plane. So we're gonna scroll down here. Sides of a right triangle. The sides of a right triangle have special names. We have one of the legs, which we can call leg A, the other one would be leg B, and then we have the hypotenuse. The legs are the two sides that form the right angle, and the hypotenuse is the side opposite the right angle. The hypotenuse is always going to be the longest side, okay? And you know it's going to be the hypotenuse because the right angle is basically pointing in the hypotenuse's direction. It's opposite, that's what we call it, of the right angle. Anyway, in any right triangle, the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs is equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse. Now that might sound a little confusing, but the equation there is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If I square this leg, and then I square this leg, and then add them up, it equals to this side length squared as well. So for this example, we're going to find the length of the hypotenuse of the triangle. Okay, well, I notice I have a right triangle here, and I know that I have this 5 meters. This is going to be a leg because it's part of the right angle. 12 meters is also going to be a leg. And then c is going to be the hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle. So I can use the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, now I'm gonna plug my values in. Once again, I know that I have five for one of my legs and 12 for one of my legs, and it doesn't matter which one I plug in because the order of addition doesn't matter. I can plug this one in for a or b, and then the other one would be whatever one I didn't plug it into. Anyway, I'm gonna plug in five first, so I'll do five squared plus 12 squared equals c squared. Okay, well, now I'm gonna simplify. I know five squared is 25, and then 12 squared is 144. Okay, and then you can add this up out or in your head. 25 plus 144 is 169. I'm going to bring down my c squared. So I get 169 equals c squared. Now, from the last section, if you remember, the way that we would solve this equation for c is by taking the positive and negative square root of both sides. But since we're dealing with a side length, we can't have a negative length. So all I need to do is take the positive square root of both sides. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And if you don't know the square root of 169 off the top of your head, you can use a little trick that I went over in the last video using multiples of 10. I know that 10 squared is 100, and I know that 20 squared is 400, okay? And I know that 169 is an odd number, so the only numbers that it could be are the numbers in between 10 and 20 that are odd. So those possibilities are going to be 11, 13, 15, 17, and 19. Now what I can do is try to eliminate some of these options here. And the way I can do that is if I look at the ones digit and just multiply it by itself, that is gonna be the ones digit of my number. Well, I know one times one is one, so that's not gonna work. I know three times three is nine, so that could work. Five times five is 25, so that digit would end in a five, so that's not gonna work. Seven times seven is 49, so this one could work. And then I have nine times nine is 81, so that would end in a one, so that can't work. So my only options here are gonna be 13 and 17. Well, 169 is closer to 100 than 400, so it's almost definitely gonna be 13, but let's just do it out to be sure. 13 times 13 is, we get a nine, and then I get a three, then I bring down a 13, and I get 169. So I know that the square root, the positive square root, I should say, of 169 is going to be 13. And since we're dealing with meters, I know that C is gonna equal 13 meters. Now, you might have known already that the square root of 169 is 13, so you wouldn't have to do all this process. But this is a quick way to do square roots without a calculator. Anyway, now we're done with example one. So for this example, we're gonna find the missing length here. Well, I see my right angle is this, and the side length opposite my right angle is gonna be the hypotenuse. So this is gonna be my hypotenuse. And the two sides that make the right angle are my legs. So this is a leg, and this is a leg, okay? So since I'm dealing with a right triangle and side lengths, I'm gonna use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And it's always a good idea to write down the Pythagorean theorem in its general form, and then plug your values in. Anyway, I know my hypotenuse is gonna be 2.9 centimeters, so that's what I'm gonna plug in for C. And then it doesn't matter which one I plug in uh, 2.14, so A or B, but since this is A, I'm just gonna leave this as A, and I'll plug 2.1 in for B. So I'm gonna get A squared plus 2.1 squared equals 2.9 squared. 
Well, I'm going to multiply these out. So you can do 2.1 times 2.1, get a 1, 2, and I get a 2 and a 4. That gives me 4, 4, 1, and I move the decimal twice. I get 4.41. So this is going to be a squared plus 4.41 equals, and then if I do 2.9 times 2.9, I get 81, and then I get 18 plus 8 is 26, and then I get 18, and then I get a 5 here. So I get a 1, 4, and then an 8, move the decimal twice, and I get 841, 8.41 I should say. Now, when solving an equation, what I want to do is isolate my term that's being squared, and then I can take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to subtract 4.41 on both sides. Well, the decimal component's going to cancel, so I'm just going to get 4 equals a squared. But once again, when I'm solving a square root and dealing with a side length, I don't need to take the negative square root. I just need to take the positive square root because you can't have a negative side length. Anyway, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And I know that a is going to equal 2 because 2 squared is 4. And I need my unit, which is going to be centimeters. So now we are done with example 2. For example 3, we're going to find the slant height of the square pyramid. Well, notice that you can make a right triangle from the top of the pyramid to the base and then from the center of the base to the side. And then this slant length is going to be the hypotenuse here. So now I have 6.4 here, and I have 4.8 here as my two legs, so I need to find the hypotenuse. So I'm going to use my Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and I'm going to plug in 6.4 for a and 4.8 for b. Once again, it doesn't matter which one you plug in for a or b. So I'm going to get 6.4 squared plus 4.8 squared equals c squared. Now I'm just going to multiply these out to square them. So I'll do 6.4 times 6.4. I get 16, and then 24 plus 1 is 25. And then I'm going to get 24 plus 2. So I get 36 plus 2, which is going to be 38. So when I add these up, I get 6, and then a 9, 0, and then a 4. Now I'm going to move my decimal two spaces. So we get 40.96 plus, and then I'm going to do 4.8 squared. So 4.8 times 4.8, I get 64. And then 4 times 8 is 32, plus 6 is 38. Bring down the 0, and I get a 2, bring up the 3. And then 4 times 4 is 16, plus 3 is 19. I get 4, 0, 1, 3, 1, 2. Move my decimal. So plus... 23.04 equals c squared. Okay, now when I add these up, well, I know the 0 0.4 and the 0 0.96 add up to 1, so this is really like 24 plus 40, or 41 plus 23, which both will give me 64 equals c squared. And then I can take the square root of both sides, positive, because once again, the negative square root is not going to matter because I can't have a negative side length. Anyway, this is going to give me 8, because 8 times 8 is equal to 64. And then my unit is going to be inches. Anyway, we've successfully found the slant height of this pyramid using the Pythagorean theorem, and now we're done. You can use right triangles in the Pythagorean theorem to find distances between points in a coordinate plane. So, for this example, we're going to find the distance between negative 2, comma 5, and 4, comma negative 3. So the first thing I'm going to do is plot these points. So negative 2 comma 5 is right here. And then 4 comma negative 3 is right here. And the way we're actually going to do this is we're going to draw a little right triangle that helps us figure out this distance. Okay, So I'm going to draw a little dashed line here. But I see that if I put a point right here, this makes this a complete horizontal line segment, and then this one would be a vertical line segment, so I can make a right triangle out of this. So I'm going to put that point down, and then draw my dashed lines, dotted lines, whatever you want to call them. Now I want to count the number of spaces between this point and this point, and then count the number of spaces between this point and this point, and then I can use my Pythagorean theorem, because this is a right triangle, to figure out this side length. Okay. Anyway, 
I see I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is eight units. And then this one is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six units. And I'm looking for my hypotenuse C because this is opposite the right angle here. So now I'm gonna write my Pythagorean theorem because I have a right triangle dealing with side lengths. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. All right, well, I wanna just plug in eight for A and six for B. So I get eight squared plus six squared equals C squared. Okay, and then eight squared is 64 and six squared is 36. That's gonna equal C squared. Well, this is gonna be 100 when I add them up. And then if I take the square root of both sides, positive only, I get 10 because 10 times 10 is equal to 100. So I have 10 units is the distance between negative two comma five and four comma negative three. And now we're done with this one. For this example, you play capture the flag. You are 50 yards north and 20 yards east of your team's base. The other team's base is 80 yards north and 60 yards east of your base. How far are you from the other team's base? Well, you can have your base anywhere on this, but I think it's easier to just have it at the origin because everything is located relative to the origin in the word problem. So I'm gonna mark this as my base. Okay, I'll do that in black. So this will be my base. And then where I am right now is 50 yards north and 20 yards east. So I'll do that one in green. So 50 yards north, that, that's up 50. And then 20 yards east, that's right 20. So that's right there. So this will be me. I'm just drawing a little key here so it doesn't get too cluttered on the graph. And then the other team's base is 80 yards north and 60 yards east of your base. So 80 yards north and 60 yards east. I'll do them in pink. So that's the other team's base. Okay, and I need to figure out how far I am from the other team's base. Well, similar to the last example, I can just make a right triangle and then find the missing hypotenuse. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a right triangle here with my dotted line. All right, and then I see that right here is the point that would make them have a right angle here. So that's gonna be right there. So if I draw another dotted line here and here, well, all I need to do now is just figure out these legs. What is the distance between this and this? Well, I start at 20 and I go 30, 40, 50, 60. So I'm adding 40 here. So if I go 10, 20, 30, 40, this is 40 units. 40 yards, I should say. And then from here, I go up 10, 20, 30. That's gonna be 30 yards, okay? And I'm looking for this. This is my distance. And I know this is my hypotenuse C because it's opposite the right angle. And it's my longest side. Anyway, I can use the Pythagorean theorem now. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And I'm gonna plug in my values here for A and B. Once again, doesn't matter which one you plug in for A or for B. So I'm gonna get 40 squared plus 30 squared equals c squared. All right, well, 40 squared I know is gonna be 1600 because four times four is 16, then add two zeros. And then same thing over here, I can do that quickly. 30 squared is gonna be 900 because three squared is nine and then add the two zeros. This equals c squared. And then if I add these up, I'm actually gonna get 2500 equals c squared. Now all that's left to do is take the positive square root of both sides. And I know my answer is going to be 50 because I know that I have 25 and the square root of 25 is five, right? And since there's two zeros here, I know that I'm just gonna have one zero because if I did 50 times 50, I'd get, well, the 25 and then plus the two zeros. So this is gonna be my answer. We could figure that out pretty quick in our head. Anyway, my unit is going to be yards. So I'm 50 yards away. I'm just gonna write that as a word answer. I am 50 yards away from the other team's base. 
So I figured out how many yards I am from the other team's base. I wrote it down as my word answer, and now we're done.